We are at Advertising Week New York. This is AW360 Live. I'm BJ Smith. I have with me Stephanie Carton from Socialfly. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Let's talk about Socialfly. You actually described it as a social media marketing and influence agency, which is different from what we typically think of when we say ad agency, right? So Absolutely. tell me about what is that? So we specialize in creating social media strategies for brands and then executing those social media strategies on behalf of the brands that we work with. And over the past few years, as influencer marketing has become more important to brands, we launched our own influencer division because we realized the importance of working with these influencers and integrating an influencer strategy into the social media strategies that we are creating. Interesting. How do you define influencers? How do you define influencers? Well, the answer is it really depends because there's all different types of influencers. So we always tell our clients and the brands that we work with to first start out with a goal, what are you looking to accomplish? And then we figure out what types of influencers would make the most sense to achieve the goals of our clients. So for example, and we were talking about this today uh, on the panel earlier uh, on, on the with TV Dr. panel with, with Dr. Oz, yes. Uh, so I was talking about the power of influencers being able to uh, drive viewership to TV shows. So we have networks that are reaching out to us to essentially hire or cast influencers to create content surrounding the launch of a new TV show, or maybe they want them to live tweet during TV shows to really gain awareness. So okay. that's why I always say our brands need to figure out what their goals are, what they're looking to accomplish, and then we find the right influencer to achieve those goals for the client. I'm curious how you engage these influencers, yet keep their content authentic? That's a really, really great question because the lines have really become blurred over the past few years yeah. and the FTC has started to crack down on influencer content and being sure that when influencers do post content that's paid for or sponsored, that they're using the appropriate hashtags to be sure that their audience knows that it that they're being paid and that it is sponsored. Okay. Um, so when we work with influencers, we first reach out to them to let them know what the brand or product is that we would be looking to have them represent. And we make sure that they're first even comfortable and excited about the product because we don't want an influencer to just push or plug product. We want them to genuinely be passionate and excited about what sure. they're talking about. Yeah. Otherwise, it comes across as completely inauthentic, uh, even if it is a product that they may or may not look like they like. In an earlier conversation, we were talking about um, the difference between the different generations, and I was sharing one of my rant that I was having with a running shoe company. And it wasn't really a bad thing, but they had uh, automatically replied to me, and I wasn't happy about the, the result. Um, so as a result, they said, you know, we, we know that you love these shoes. We want to send you a pair to try out our newest version. So from that standpoint, they gave me a product. Is that something that I need to, as I'm you know, tweeting about it, because I'm going to, as I'm putting it on Instagram, do I need to be saying, by the way, this was, or hashtag ad, or by the way, this was uh, you know, a free, yeah, I know if I write a review, then I'll put in there that this was you know, promotional or whatever. Well, you would want to let your audience know that the company sent you the shoes and that you didn't pay for them. Right. The FTC actually just released a whole new set of guidelines over the past few weeks. So my recommendation would be to go to their website and read all of their uh, all of their new the criteria. But right. here's the thing. It's okay. not legal mumbo jumbo. Oh, so they rewrote good. everything and you can completely understand all of the examples. So they actually give a similar scenario in that a brand sends a product to you and you can choose to review it or post it about it on your Instagram or your Twitter account, but, but you don't have to. You're making that choice. But you should let people know that they did send it to you. Right. Yeah. So things have changed a lot over the past decade. What are you seeing with uh, the, the changes that are happening in, in not just agencies, but uh, in social media and all that is happening recently. Yeah, the biggest change I would say is that over the past, we'll call it five to 10 years, content really is the most important thing that brands have to focus on and how to create compelling content that's really going to cut through the clutter and cut through the noise because there's so much that is going on on social media. Uh, so the brands that are creating this really compelling, interesting content and they're, we're, they're putting that content in front of their exact target audience, those are the brands that we see that are, that are winning on social media. So being able to quickly create content is very important for brands because you can't wait 
even an hour now, if something is trending, to yeah. come up with what you want your response to be, you have to be able to do it immediately in real time. Is everybody still waiting for their Oreo moment? Everyone is definitely waiting for their Oreo moment, but you know what? That was the perfect example that brands are now trying to emulate and follow. So is, it, is that something that they can use their influencers to stay on top of? I mean, because influencers are obviously creating content. Absolutely. I would say that brands can look to contract or hire influencers to be uh, promoting or talking about their brand or products, especially doing, during live TV shows, whether it's the Oscars or the Grammys or the, I don't want to say the Olympics, you have to be very careful with using, right, using right. the Olympics yeah, absolutely. Um, and, or the Super Bowl and right. creating content around their brand during those peak moments, I think is a very good strategy. Excellent. Well, uh, is the use of influencers something that only the big guys can afford to do? I mean, we talked about Dr. Oz. Clearly, he's an influencer. Yes. How do smaller brands get in, engage different influencers? Smaller brands can absolutely work with influencers, and a strategy that we've employed with many of our clients who have come to us specifically for influencer campaigns is working with these micro-influencers. So these are these up-and-coming influencers, and let's say we're talking about Instagram in particular, they may have between 5,000 and 50,000 followers on Instagram, but they have a very engaged audience. Right. And working with them, because they're first really trying to grow their brand, it's not as expensive to contract working with them as it is an influencer who might have 200,000 to a million followers. So these micro-influencers become a really great way to be able to create uh, really quick, uh, beautiful content that is relatively inexpensive to brands and also help build that brand's credibility. Well, Stephanie, thank you for joining us here on AW360. Thank you for having me. It's good to meet you. Thank you. We'll be back with more AW360 Live at Advertising Week New York. Stick around.